Hello fellow introverts and welcome back to the channel. What does a Chinese tactician, a Viking warlord, and an English thief have in common? I'm about to tell you. First, let's start off with Sun Tzu. Now, Sun Tzu is traditionally believed to have lived during the Eastern Zhao period in ancient China, which spans between the 5th and the 6th century BCE. The exact timing of his life remains a subject of debate among scholars. Little is known about Sun Tzu's personal life, and there are a few historical records that provide details about his upbringing or family. Sun Tzu is best known for his treaties on military strategy and tactics as well as being the author of The Art of War, or Sun Tzu Bing Fa. While he is often credited as the author, there is uncertainty about the exact authorship. Some scholars suggest that the text may have been compiled from Sun Tzu's teachings and writings, while others propose the involvement of multiple contributors. Now the content of The Art of War is a concise and influential work that explores various aspects of warfare, leadership, and strategy. It emphasizes the importance of deception, strategic planning, and adaptability on the battlefield, and extends beyond military strategy to include principles of leadership, diplomacy, understanding both oneself and your enemy. Now, The Art of War is considered one of the most important works of military strategy in history. Beyond military context, Sun Tzu's principles have been applied to business, leadership, and other fields. Sun Tzu is regarded as a historical and cultural figure of significance in China, and his teachings continue to be studied as part of Chinese education and philosophy. Translated into numerous languages, the art of war has left lasting impact on military thought globally. The origin of our Viking warrior, Mr. Ragnar Lothbrok, who you may be familiar with if you watch the show Vikings. Now, the origin of Ragnar Lothbrok is deeply rooted in North mythology and legendary sagas. Ragnar is a legendary Norse hero whose exploits are recounted in Old Norse sagas, poems, and later medieval writings. Ragnar Lothbrok is historically debated. There is no clear historical evidence confirming his existence. His legendary status makes it challenging to separate fact from myth. The Saga of Yingling provides an account of Ragnar's birth, his legendary deeds, and his eventual death. The Tale of the Sons of Ragnar is a later saga, expands on the tales of Ragnar's sons and their own adventure. Accounts of Ragnar's birth vary. In some versions, he is a son of a Swedish king, Sigurd Ring, while others attribute his birth to the god Odin and a mortal woman. Ragnar is renowned for his extraordinary feats, including raids on France and England. Notable exploits include the legendary capture of Paris, famously portrayed in the Siege of Paris saga. Ragnar embodies the ideals of Viking heroism, characterized by bravery, cunning, and the thirst for adventure. The sagas describe Ragnar's mysterious death, with various accounts suggest he was thrown into a snake pit or subject to the infamous Blood Eagle execution. Ragnar Lothbrok's legend gained renewed popularity in modern times, especially due to the historical drama television series Vikings, which aired from 2013 to 2020. The character of Ragnar, portrayed by Travis Fimmel, became an iconic figure in pop culture. Ragnar's character has come to symbolize the quintessential Viking hero, influencing modern perceptions of Norse culture and history. Ragnar Lothbrok's origins lie in a rich tapestry of Norse sagas and mythology, while the historical veracity of his existence remains uncertain. His legendary deeds and adventures have left an indelible mark on Norse culture and continue to captivate audiences throughout various adaptations in literature, television, and pop culture. Now the third is Robin Hood. We've all heard of Robin Hood, as well as the other two fictional characters or alleged fictional characters that I'm talking about. The origins of Robin Hood is deeply rooted in English folklore, ballads, and medieval legends. The character of Robin Hood is a legendary outlaw who, according to the popular tradition, lived during the reign of 
Richard the Lionheart, in 1189 to 1199, and King John, 1199 to 1216 in England. The earliest references of Robin Hood are found in medieval ballads and folk tales. These ballads are likely orally transmitted before being recorded in written form. One of the earliest ballads that recount Robin Hood's adventure include his encounter with Sheriff of Nottingham. The historical existence of Robin Hood remains uncertain, and there is limited concrete evidence to support the claim that he was a real person. Some theories suggest that the character might have been inspired by various outlaws and rebels who lived during the medieval period. Some of the most famous key elements, Sherwood Forest. Robin Hood is often associated with Sherwood Forest in Nottinghamshire, where he is said to have lived as an outlaw. Robin is depicted as the leader of a band of merry men, including characters like Little John, Friar Tuck, and Will Scarlet. A central theme in the legend is Robin Hood's commitment to robbing from the rich and redistributing wealth to the poor. Numerous ballads and tales recount Robin Hood's various exploits, including the clash with the Sheriff of Nottingham, his archery skills, and his chivalrous axe. The character of Robin Hood has evolved over centuries, with different storytellers adding their own elements to the legend. The earliest printed ballads of Robin Hood began to circulate, solidifying his status as popular folk hero. Robin Hood's image was further romanticized during the Victorian era, emphasizing his role as a champion of justice. The legend of Robin Hood has a profound impact on English literature, inspiring numerous plays, novels, films, and television series. His character has become a symbol of resistance against tyranny and a champion of social justice. Robin Hood's legacy endures, and the character continues to be reinvented and adapted in various forms of media. While the historical existence of Robin Hood remains elusive, his legendary status has cemented him as one of the most enduring and beloved figures in English folklore, representing the ideals of justice, fairness, and the struggle against oppression. Now, why did I just waste your time telling you all that? It is up for debate that each one of the significant historical or mythological figures has a hard time tracing their origin and may or may not, in my humble opinion, be a group of people with shared ideals given a face in time of need. So, during Sun Tzu's creation, the Eastern Zhao period in ancient China specifically, a time marked by frequent warfare and political instability, there was a need for effective military strategies. And again, Sun Tzu's teachings in the art of war addressed the pressing need for comprehensive military tactics, providing guidance on leadership, strategy, and diplomacy. His emphasis on adaptability, deception, and understanding of the enemy resonates militaristic concerns of the time. Furthermore, in Norse society, characterized by seafaring, exploration, and warrior ethos, there was a cultural emphasis on heroism, adventure, and the prowess in battle. Ragnar Lothbrok embodies the Norse ideals for the heroic warrior, undertaking legendary adventures, raiding distant lands, embodying the virtues of strength and cunning. His character provided a mythical representation of the Viking spirit and contributed to a cultural narrative of Norse heroism. In medieval England, there was a social and economic inequality, which commoners often faced oppression and poverty. The populace needed a symbol of resistance and justice. Robin Hood emerged as a folk hero who robbed from the rich and gave to the poor, embodying the desire for social justice and resistance against tyrannical authority. His character fulfilled the cultural need for a symbol of hope and defiance during time of societal disparities. I mean, there is a distinct possibility that these legendary figures, Sun Tzu, Ragnar, and Robin Hood, may have not been distinct individuals, but rather composite characters, groups of people or embodiments of cultural ideals is a valid consideration. Each figure has elements that could suggest a collective representation rather than a singular historical person. Now, Sun Tzu, collective wisdom. The authorship of The Art of War has been debated. It is plausible that the teachings represent collective military wisdom compiled over time. The ideas within the text align with broader Chinese military and philosophical traditions suggesting a shared cultural mindset. 
Ragnar. The character of Ragnar Lothbrok, with his extraordinary exploits, may be a composite representation of various Viking heroes and adventures. The sagas, being oral traditions, could have blended the deeds of multiple individuals into the legendary figure of Ragnar. Robin Hood could have originated as a symbol of resistance against social injustices rather than a single person. Various outlaws and rebels may have contributed to the legend. The character has undergone numerous adaptations suggesting a malleable and symbolic nature that serves the culture needed for the champion of the downtrodden. In all cases, the line between historical reality and myth is often blurred, and legendary figures frequently evolve from collective storytelling, cultural needs, and shared values. The narrative surrounding these figures might have been shaped and embellished over time to represent archetypical ideals rather than the deeds of specific individuals. It's essential to recognize the cultural impact of these figures often transcends questions of historical accuracy. Whether they were real individuals, composites, or symbols, these legendary characters have played a crucial role in shaping cultural identities, reflecting societal values, and providing enduring narratives that resonate across generations. Now, why would the common folk need such ideals? Why would they need representation? And here is probably why they were being repressed in the first place. Ideas can be perceived as dangerous to the ruling class, especially if those ideas challenge or undermine the existence power struggle, ideologies, or social orders. So, the first way that they can, ideas can be dangerous is to challenge the authorities. Ideas that promote alternative political systems, questions of legitimacy of ruling authorities, or advocate the significant societal changes can be seen as a threat to power. Movements fueled by ideas advocating for social justice, equality, or reforms can pose a challenge to the ruling class, particularly if those in power resist such change. Ideas that critically examine and expose flaws in existing economic, political, or social systems may be viewed as dangerous, and as they erode the legitimacy of those in authority. Ideas that empower and mobilize marginalized groups, encouraging them to question authority or demand their rights, may be perceived as a threat to the ruling class's control. Intellectual or cultural movements that challenge prevailing norms or ideologies can be seen as subversive, especially if they encourage independent thinking and dissent. The spread of ideas facilitated by advances in communication and technology can quickly challenge and undermine established narratives, making it more challenging for the ruling class to control information. Ideas that inspire revolutionary movements abdicating for the overthrow of existing regimes or systems are typically viewed with great concern by those in power. Individual thinkers or groups that engage in iconoclastic thoughts, challenging traditional beliefs, or a questioning established authorities can be perceived as a threat to the status quo, with examples of ideals challenging ruling classes, from political revolutions to social movements. Whether through literature, philosophy, or activism, ideas have the power to shape perspectives, mobilize populations, and ultimately influence the distribution and retention of power in society. As a result, ruling classes often seek to control or suppress ideas that pose a perceived threat to their continued dominance. Now, the ideologies surrounding Sun Tzu, Ragnar Lothbrok, and Robin Hood were shaped by the historical events and cultural context in which they gained popularity. Each figure embodied distinct ideologies that resonated with the challenge and values of their perspective times. Sun Tzu's teachings are represented in the art of war, emphasizing strategic thinking, adaptability, and the importance of understanding oneself and the enemy. During the Eastern Zhao period of, in ancient China, marked by frequent warfare and power struggles, Sun Tzu's ideas provided a comprehensive framework for military strategy and leadership. While Ragnar embodies the Viking ideals for heroism, courage, and exploration, his legendary exploits symbolize the adventurous spirit of the Norse people. In a society marked by seafaring, raiding, and warrior ethos, Ragnar's character reflects the cultural values and aspirations of the Norse during the Viking Age. Robin Hood represents the ideals of social justice, resistance against oppression, and the redistribution of wealth. His character challenged the social and economic inequalities in medieval England. 
Emerging during a time of feudalism and class disparities, Robin Hood's legacy reflects a desire for justice and the defiance of tyrannical authorities. Now, Sun Tzu, Ragnar, and Robin Hood all embody leadership qualities and adaptability in the face of challenges. Whether in warfare, exploration, or social justice, the ability to lead and adapt resonated with the cultural needs for their respective societies. Both Ragnar and Robin Hood represent a form of resistance against oppressive forces. Whether resisting foreign invasion in the case of Ragnar or, or challenging unjust rulers in the case of Robin Hood, the themes of resistance resonate with the cultural context of their times. While each figure emerged in distinct historical and cultural settings, common themes of leadership, adaptability, and resistance against oppression weave through their ideologies. Their enduring popularity attests the timeless appeal of these ideals and the ways in which the figures continue to resonate with diverse audiences across cultures and eras. Well, that's all I have to say about that. And if you've enjoyed this exploration into the rambling ideologies of a thought that I've had, uh, why don't you go ahead and like, subscribe, and share. And then we can talk about this a little bit more. And with that, I will talk to you nerds later.